In the year 1997, the future is in chaos and turmoil. Mankind is on the brink of extinction. Brave survivors band together and build a time displacement apparatus to receive a signal from a parallel future. This transmission is the Boondicott. Official podcast of Blindablog.com, the home of whatever. The podcast that knows that Jeff Goldblum would have been a great CGI villain for the end of Justice League, right? Mm-hmm. If he had voiced Steppenwolf, everyone would have forgiven him on time, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I am your host, Steven, and with me today is the ever wonderful Wonder Woman of this podcast. Danielle, chicken nugget, how you doing? The Cohortress, I like that name better. You like Cohortress? Well, I, you can you also like do villain, chicken nugget, moniker, but so also Cohortress. Of course so I like a villain moniker. Titles. We've discussed this. So many titles. Also with us, enjoying naps Why? are the Linda Dogs, yeah. Xena, Duke, Rusty, and Morty. Currently, Xena, Duke, and Rusty are in like a triangular situation around the microphones mm-hmm. so they start having puppy dreams we may get some podcast over we right may now. get some puppy dreams or if someone moves an inch outside too close to the proximity of the house we might get a Bark chorus fest. of barking in which case we'll go to a commercial for mm-hmm. radiate.fm or any of our fine it's been a while podcast friends it's it's been a while as always we, is the song of always, our podcast yeah it's we been should, a while. It is a song. We should write a theme song. It's been a while. Hopefully in 2018. We know we never podcast on time. I think that in 2018, we're going to unite the unite infinity gems of okay. consistency. Woo. And consistency. time management. Time management. Responsibility. Uh, confidence. Creativity. Boom! And sexual super- That's six. superbitude. You have six fingers? Okay. I have, I have ten fingers. <laughs> so that was your question? dick. Sexual <laughs> No, but I mean, you have six fingers on one hand? Because the infinity mm. glove is only one hand. Well, it's because in the gauntlet, they have the five, one on each knuckle, and yeah, then one in the center. Of what? his fist. That doesn't make sense. Because that's how Is it's it six. Is it each one for each finger? Yeah, but he doesn't have six fingers. Oh, you're right. He has five fingers. He has two. six infinity stones. Yeah, so he but has that's, one oh, on each knuckle and then me. one in the center. That bothers me. That's the design of the infinity oh, gauntlet. Oh, God. Okay. What? He should have five on one and then one solo no, on the other he hand? he should like, have five. Hey. He should have five. No, it's six stones for something. He should have one, like, okay. on a necklace that he wears or, like, a fancy ring. So this 98th edition of our Fine Vundacast podcast, uh-huh. um, Stephen and Danielle, you know, we're, we're planning on doing a good Justice League uh, review, mm-hmm. but this podcast is more of a rebuttal to backlash upon the internet that is, you know, taking over the popular conversation. When it comes to Justice League and to the creative forces in both the Marvel and DC universe. Unfortunately, perhaps because we live in a world where we've got to have winners and losers sometimes. And apparently we cannot exist in a space where both DC and Marvel share the spotlight equally and well at all times. You know, good and bad, light and dark. So DC has become the... Redheaded stepchild, no offense to redheads. Of nerds. Uh, of the nerd, oh, the movie universe, I'm sorry, has become the redheaded stepchild of the movie kingdom. 
and Marvel is the the golden the golden one the the, the great child the A student, and I think now the Avengers Infinity trailer just dropped. Infinity War. I said Infinity War. I said Infinity trailer. Whatever. Who gives a fuck? Fl- you gave me improper. Infinity name. trailer. Infinity oh. War trailer. That's so long. Anyway. It's gonna be the A I W. Okay. I U. The I-U. Marvel's culmination mm-hmm. of ten years of work trailer dropped today, mm-hmm. um, as we're doing this podcast, and I had some emotions about it because of what's been happening with the Justice League movie, and what's been happening on the social media sphere. Why are you paying attention to that, Danielle? You may ask. Well, because you know. We attempt to have a relevant pop culture podcast blog thing, so that means that we've got to follow on the on the schnizzle on the stuff. And so I had feelings after I watched the trailer today, and I immediately called Stephen to begin to express those feelings. And he and I said we should talk about this on the podcast. So here we go. So first of all. Danielle's initial reaction to the Infinity War trailer <laughs> was that it looks extremely... Okay, wait, 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 stop. What? Background. Little bit. No. Yes, quick, quick background. Why? why? Go. You're just going to talk about it with no context? No, I like to, like, seed the story. Fine, seed the story. I like to seed it. I don't understand it. I, like I feel like your narrative tale. flow is weak. I like to see the tale. Yeah, see the. So Danielle's initial reaction mm-hmm. to the trailer was that it looked extremely similar to the elements that the internet Say has ju- dubbed Say it problematic out loud. in Justice League. Justice League, thank you. Okay. okay. And I've rewatched it now four times. And I still feel the same way about many scenes in the fucking movie. Here is my... Pro- okay, now the background. You've seeded the story. Now the background. I am not a blind person, okay, in terms of story and plot and understanding. And obviously, once it, first of all, that. subjectively, all, all these opinions are subjective, okay? But subjectively... I am not blind to the fact that, you know, DC has not really been hitting out of the park with most of their films. Man of Steel, didn't really like Man of Steel. That was my first, I didn't like it because I felt that Superman was very mischaracterized. I felt like Superman is not Batman, why are you making Super Batman? And then, you know, we had... I think we had Batman versus Superman, and if, and unfortunately, I think a lot of the mistakes that were made in Man of Steel came back to haunt Zack Snyder in and BVS, and that caused issues. And then Suicide Squad, and that was just like, what the hell happened there, um, David Ayers? And then the shining light, Wonder Woman came, and Wonder Woman was fantastic and like a beacon, but like. Yeah. I disagree with Danielle. <gasps> Whoa. Sh- I'm not done. Wait, but I thought we were establishing our backstories. I am, and mm-hmm. I'm not done with my backstory. You hate my narrative flow after 98 I podcasts. do. It's a- and yeah. so then, and then, uh, you know, the new Justice League movie came out, and I, despite not having liked, really, like, not really enjoying and finding only pieces to enjoy of BBS, Man of Steel, Suicide Squad, but really enjoying Wonder Woman... I actually liked the Justice League movie. Did I find it a perfect movie? No. And I think a lot of those issues stem from not just create per, per, creative issues, but also n- behind the scenes issues. Because I do believe at this point, the people to blame are not Zach, not even Zack Snyder, not Joss Whedon. I think a lot to blame is the WB studio executives who continuously meddle and interfere in their films to try to outpace uh disney and i don't think that's a fight that can be that should be fought that way i don't think it should be this playground anything you can do i can do better Mm -hmm. kind of thing um but i think that's what unfortunately has happened to the dceu and 
So I liked Justice League, right? And so, and you know, and I was never, uh, first of all, let me preface before Steven con continues his backstory. I hate this Marvel vs. DC bullshit. I think it is the most reductive, immature nonsense. I was telling Steven that it reminds me of like when I was in college and the whole ninjas versus pirates shit was going on. And it started as a big joke, but then some fucking idiots took it way too seriously and like turned it into a whole internet flamey thing. And I think that it's, I think that this has become just as childish and immature as that. I think that it's ridiculous. I mean, for one, to just, the whole idea is basically these two groups of creative media are so derivative of the other mm -hmm. to argue that one is better than another is stupid um but to argue it in this way that like you want to see the downfall of one for the success of the other it really it does it makes you feel it makes you feel cranky mm -hmm. like it makes you it's silly and it's and it's also like you know i have thoughts but anyway so steven what is your what is your backstory on this so, unlike Danielle, mm -hmm. who has had a doubtful history trusting WB mm -hmm. and DC mm -hmm. to make good movies, mm -hmm. I enjoyed Man of Steel, okay? I enjoyed BVS DOJ theatrical cut, okay? I was in the minority, mm -hmm. alright? Suicide Squad... I wanted to like, and there are moments like in Suicide, Suicide Squad, Squad that are good. The problem with the DC movies, up until they made Wonder Woman, was that they hadn't figured out how to make a movie. They were making... <laughs> That's a big problem No, they there, were making though. comic book adaptations. They weren't uh -huh. like trying to figure out how to like turn this into like an actual like movie with a movie structure. I think... They hadn't built a formula the way that Marvel I think has the been big, slowly uh, building this formula. I think, and I think the big problem is the shadow of Christopher Nolan that has hailed over mm -hmm. DC. Well, I think that instead of taking... And, and this is the problem in terms of executive interference, is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. I think that Christopher Nolan Batman series should have been taken as a standalone interpretation of Batman and the D the DC universe. I think that that's the what it should have been and what it should have stayed. And then they if they were going to retool and go let's do Superman now, they should have thought about who Superman is as a character, who we want him mm -hmm. to be and try to stick closer to his characterization than what they really did, which was go, oh my god, we have to recreate what Christopher Nolan does, but Christopher Nolan doesn't want to do Superman, so I guess we'll find Zack Snyder, who really likes slow motion and butt shots, and we're gonna, like, put him, and he's gonna do Christopher Nolan for us, because Zack likes a dark film, but he likes a dark film filmed um, entirely with slow motion CG blood flying across the screen is basically what Zack Snyder likes. Hey, Sorry. quiet down, Thank sir. You. That was George texting me DC news. Okay, well, you can take yeah. a... Mr. J, you can read that in a second. Sorry. Anyway, but that's what I think was their first error, but, that's ex but that is specifically because of executive interference. Because... Like all movie studios now, that it's like a, a apparently just this giant crapshoot of what do we do? It's gonna make us a million dollars, a billion dollars right well, now. They were like, well, this formula made us money, so obviously it's gonna work with every other hero. We'll figure out a way to make it work with every other hero. That, and I'm sorry, that around that time, that's also when Arrow came out, and that's when Man of Steel came out, and they both tried to stick into this Nolan verse world and it has not served either of them well. It hasn't served long term. No. So not long term. It hasn't served Superman well and the DC movie universe well and it has not served Arrow well. Arrow at this point in my opinion is almost unwatchable. And he the only time Arrow is watchable is when he's doing the mega uber awesome crossovers with the rest of the other DC shows, which 
were smart enough, the television side of things, were smart enough to buck against the trend of dark and start and go, no, we need to do something fun. You're close on that timeline. Ooh. So basically what happened is... I am close. I know it's not perfectly like... Remembering 2008. <laughs> 2008, everyone was kind of thought superhero movies are washed up. Mm-hmm. All right? Then Iron Man comes out then the dark knight comes out mm -hmm. and people start thinking holy shit superhero movies is just the tip of the iceberg mm -hmm. all right dc unwisely decides at that point they could have continued making nolan batman movies mm -hmm. and started a dc film universe without nolan's involvement but yeah. they still thought these people are stupid these nerds don't get it yeah Blah, blah, blah. They'll get confused. They'll think that the Joker's going to be in this movie. Whatever. So they didn't do it. They waited. They let Marvel build their shit up. Then 2012 comes along. They make The Dark Knight Rises. Okay? Marvel's been chugging along. They release Arrow. Okay? In 2012. Mm -hmm. Grim and gritty after The Dark Knight Rises. And 2012, boom, Avengers comes out. You see what Marvel has been building for us. Avengers comes out. Because Joss Whedon pulls it off, okay? Before Avengers came out, people thought, okay, and I fought this opinion that Iron Man was, like, the only good movie. Iron Man 2 was bleh, and it was all wait, set wait, up. Wait, rewind. So was I right about uh, Arrow came around 2012, time? so it was still under Nolan's influence. Yeah, it was exactly. Dark Knight Rises That's what I'm out. saying. Yes. And it was, the, yeah. Yeah. People... The Incredible Hulk, I like The Incredible Hulk. People didn't like The Incredible Hulk. Mm -hmm. Okay? Edward Norton obviously didn't want to be fucking around. Mm -hmm. These motherfuckers. You've already gone all the way into that? No, wait, wait. Thor. Okay, I'm listening. I'm listening. Then Thor, we enjoyed Thor. Yes. Most people were shitting on Thor. Yes. And thought Thor was the redheaded stepchild, stepchild for yeah. a long time. <laughs> Captain America, first Avenger. People thought it was boring. Extremely mixed response. People thought yeah. it was boring. People didn't get it for what it was trying to be all stylistically and stuff. Then Avengers comes out and it redeems all of those four films that came before it. Yeah, so, yeah, let, no, so, okay, you're stealing my point. You stole my point. Well, it's our point. Bro. It wasn't our point? No, you're <laughs> right. It was our point. I'm sorry. I'm being greedy. But yes, our point at this point, right, because, okay, because we're talking about this because we've gone to the zenith. Avengers Infinity War is the zenith of everything that's been building towards. And and for and now, you know, everyone is going to look at Justice League and look at Avengers Infinity War and go, see, this is how you do a multi-team of clockety, clockety, flockety, blue. You wait 20 movies and then you put 40 characters in it. And, the what ones, the and, what, and so the reason why I've become very emotional about this is because I'm realizing... And I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I don't think that all the critics hate DC and love Marvel and blah, blah, blah. But here's what I do think. I don't think it's a conspiracy theory that they're actively shitting on DC movies and celebrating Marvel movies more. What I think it is, is I think they're giving all of the Marvel movies far more of the benefit of the doubt than they will give DC. Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of like that kid that's always late to class and never has a good excuse, right? And then they want, and you're just about to be like, I'm going to kick this kid out. But then one day they're like, look, I'm late to class today because I really have a good excuse. Like my mom was in the hospital and you have to like decide, or am I going to listen to this kid? And am I going to be like, yeah, okay, kid, you know what? I'm going to give you another chance. Or you're going to be like, fuck this kid, get out of my school, you're the worst. It's like that. It's kind of like, and I and look, and I'm not saying that that Warner Brothers isn't responsible for that negative attention, and I do, and you know, and I think that living in the year that we are right now, you know, living in these times, I think that there are certain factors, multiple factors. One of them may also be. Just a very simple idea, and like if you want to look at it from a feminist critique perspective, there is like a sense of uber masculinity to the DC universe that I think, outside of Wonder Woman, doesn't sell as well 
in this modern era where Avengers kind of the, 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 it's more that they've always kind of or they've learned not always but learned to kind of make fun of that uber masculinity of their heroes so that they aren't like these like just like these big hulking whatever that's a small feminist critique that's not the only reason okay i i do think i do understand how dc's kind of shot itself in the foot and they struggle with the critical response but i think a lot of that is because they aren't really going into those movies with a clean slate i think that they're really going into those movies with all of the ideas of what is ba was bad before and coming in again. That's my opinion. I'm sure critics will tell me to go fuck myself, but I'm sorry, I don't think you'll exist in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. You don't exist in a vacuum, you don't, and, and the very factor is if you come in not liking Snyder, his vision, any of the kind of what they've been doing, you're already coming into the movie going bleh. So for many of the other critical responses to the other DC movies, I felt they were fair. I really loved Wonder Woman, and it made me very excited. I think Wonder Woman was great. Do I think Wonder, Wonder Woman, Woman was, was perfect? Cause, no, Wonder Woman was successful because it was the first movie that felt like a movie. Yes. It didn't feel like yes. an adaptation of a comic. Yes. It felt like it had a three-act structure. It had a beginning, it had a middle, and an end. it had an end. And the okay. thing is, is that even Wonder Woman is not a perfect movie. There are definitely weaknesses in the third act, mm -hmm. and there are weaknesses, you know, up and around. But... Like like Steven said, it felt like a movie, it was enjoyable, and Gal, I mean, like, I was the person shitting on Gal Gadot, thinking, this bitch cannot hack this, you can travel she's back gonna to our fail. DC films extravaganza that we Thank you, with, and I was, suggest. like, angry. I said she was too skinny, I said she was too this. Everything about her, I was shitting on, like, very, very un unfair and of now me. now she's and madly in love. And now, no, but she really is encapsulates the spirit of Wonder Woman. She really did. She did the damn thing. I think for much of the positive praise for Wonder Woman is, is, is she's responsible for. Just because she truly has a very, like, fresh and open and gregarious take on this character, she's instantly a likable person like instantly a likable person and like that's the thing is like, that for all the con for all the controversy about oh she's israeli i don't you know whatever the f you know all that nonsense whatever you guys want to argue about it to death on the internet she's israeli that she's a like Racist she's bullshit. all i don't want to say what i'm not even gonna i, I want to i don't even want to i don't want to deal with that that stuff is like that stuff is like the israeli palestinian shit I don't like getting involved because that shit is a clusterfuck and I just, I want someone smarter than me to figure it out. That's all. And I don't think anybody on the internet is smarter, smart to figure it out. I think someone else, maybe who hasn't even been born yet, hasn't figured out how someone smarter figure that out with more compassion and more figure that shit out. I don't even want to touch that with a 10 foot pole. Yo, you, future child, figure out anti-Semitism. Current child. Boom. But you see, you're saying anti-Semitism, and, and I don't think like that's what I'm saying. It's like it's more complicated. It's more complicated than that. Yeah. So yes, some of the critique of her has become very anti-Semitic, and that is very and that's bullshit. But some of the critique of her is of obviously because of the whole Israeli-Palestinian conflict mm -hmm. and the Israeli occupation, and, and I will call it that. I am not blind to it, but I'm just saying, take that crap away because of like one comment she made supporting her own country you know what i mean like mm. eh. like she has never in the public face presented anything but a really like likable like it's not just the fact that in but her how character amazing would it be? it's not just her character it's not just her character like you know, in the movie, it's like her as like an actress and like a per she is an extremely likable, like she feels a very likable person. I'm not going to say she's a likable person because I'm I don't know her personally. I'm not trying to belittle the conflict. Oh God. See, he's going to delve. No, you I'm delve. not going to belittle the conflict, but I'm just saying that it's interesting that somebody who is born into this, you know, divided, uh, conflict mm -hmm. would you know, get a chance to embody this warrior for peace, you know, embodiment. Well, some would say that because the Israelis are the power right now, 
that really is looks more like a colonizer coming in. It's complicated. I am not getting into it. Steven, you delved. I'm not delving. God damn it, woman. I don't want to delve. If you want to have a fucking conversation with the no, Israeli No, I'm not. You brought it up, bro. I'm bringing it up you because... You brought it up. I'm bringing it up because I believe... I'm trying to make a clear stance. Shh. I don't want to make a clear stance. There I'm is trying no, to make a clear stance. I don't have a clear stance, except that I don't... Except that I think it's I'm bad when people hurt each sense. other. But Steve, oh my god, I'm just I don't want to delve movie. into this because you're basically saying that anybody who says that the Israelis are doing... I'm not doing that. I'm not saying that at all. I'm okay. just saying that I'm against the anti-Semitism. Okay. And a lot of the talk around her has been very anti-Semitic. Some and of I think it that's has. extremely unfair. Some of it has I been very anti-Semitic. I think that's extremely unfair. Some of it has been anti-Semitic. Okay. Some of it has been more nuanced than that. I think the more nuanced stuff is the more interesting it's, it's, to it's, listen it's, to. It's almost, it's, it's more xenophobic than the bullshit Henry Cavill was getting when he was cast for being British, British. and being Superman. I, it's, well, because, it's, it's because of the but fact Superman's that a it's, fucking immigrant. but it was more because of the, it's a comment that she made in terms of an attack that the Israelis had on the Palestinians. Well, see, now you're delving into it. You did it! No, but I'm see, done. You, you want to delve into no, it. No, cut. You want to delve into it. I don't want to delve into it. I just. Then why do you keep on talking about because it? Because you. I was trying to turn it into Henry Cavill being no. British. No, you And weren't. you keep on going no, back weren't. to it, bro. You, you, you fucking keep said. Going back no, to because it. you tried to make this blanket statement about anti Semitism, and I think that's very myopic, and I don't think that that's the right thing so to say. So then let it go. I'm letting it go. I want to let it go. Let it go. I want to let it go. Let it go. Like Elsa. Let it go. Frozen. Let it go. Like Elsa. Let it. No, I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about Gal Gadot and why, as barring that other shit, ben she's Affleck a very is from Boston. She's a very likable persona, and so I think that reflects into the movie. And I think that that is really what helped Wonder Woman succeed. Like I said, so a lot of the stuff and the favor that was given to Wonder Woman, I think is it is owed to fresh perspective. And all that kind of stuff like that. But now, Justice League, I feel like because the old players came back, Snyder and other characters and whatever, I feel like they went kind of, I don't know, I feel like, I feel like they, they kind of just went back to their old sort of, like, closed off way. Ah! Sorry. What's going on? Why are you holy shitting me? I just had like a horror movie thought and I'm trying to see if it's You're true. talking about Justice League. I know, this isn't connected to Justice League. This is or is not? This is connected to Justice How League. How is this connected? In the history oh of my God. Justice League. Okay, I'm going to continue. So like I was saying, I think that, I think that Justice League, I feel of two minds because I think that some people wanted to Justice League a little more excited because Wonder Woman was in it. But then I also feel like they went in less excited because Zack Snyder was involved. And so this is the first time that I felt like the criticism that was given to Justice League was kind of unfair. Like, I don't think that a 37... And I know Rotten Tomatoes, we can get into the whole thing about Rotten Tomatoes, but I don't think a Rotten Tomatoes score of 37% was particularly fair. Yeah. I don't think the consensus of the critics, the and I read several tomatoes. reviews, I don't know, but I don't think the critical consensus and the critics' reviews were were fair. I don't think they were fair. Um, I think that it deserved, in terms of, like, how, in terms of how well the camaraderie of the team and all that kind of stuff. Now, was, do I think this movie was perfect? Absolutely not. I do see a lot of flaws, but I don't think that there are 37% flaws. Like, I think this movie deserved at least a 50%. At least. It could go either way. You know it what I mean? It's a very entertaining movie. Especially if you... Like, I looking. give it... I give it a B plus. A maybe a low A minus. Like, right at the bottom of the A minus. For certain... But that's the thing. Once again, the issue being that... For certain parts of the movie, I think I give it a B plus, A minus. And for certain parts, I do give it, like, a C. C minus because of certain things. But my point being that at, so all this started to happen and I started to kind of like and, and when this whole reactionary stuff happened with Justice League and how people were, you know, the critics kind of meh and then there were people who really enjoyed it and they were feeling like it was unfair. Then all of a sudden I started seeing just kind of like this torrent of 
negative, angry reaction to, I think what is, you know, what is happening is it's a negative, angry reaction because of the fact that people who are DC fans, and I don't mean DC fans of the movie, I mean DC fans of the characters, Batman, Wonder Woman, Superman, Green Lantern, and all those characters, they're kind of feeling like shit on, you know what I mean? And so when you start feeling shit on, you start looking for people to blame. Mm-hmm. You start looking for anger, you know, you start thinking, why didn't, and especially since when Justice League premiered, it did not make the $110 million that they expected it to, it made less than that, and now they're worried that it's going to take a loss for Warner Brothers, and, and that's the thing. And see, that's another interesting point, because that that funnels into my thoughts that I've been having about the whole idea of corporatism and creativity mm-hmm. and fucking shit and how we're all mired in it now. And it's become this, like, clusterfuck of, like, capitalism. And, you know what I mean? Remember I want to talk... Mm-hmm. I was talking about how I would love to have... Love to do, like, a... Like, you know, creativity and capitalism based off of, like, nerd... Nerd, like, culture. Mm-hmm. Because it's such a, like, we're so mired in it now. We're so stuck into it. Like more than we've ever been, you know, like, more than we ever have been, like, and we always have kind of been stuck in it, because no matter what nerds say, it's always been giant media companies that have been giving us the material that we wanted, and, you know, the the, the artificiality of feeling like something is underground and indie when it's being run by a multi-million mm-hmm. dollar corporation well, is uh, such a false feeling but yet I, it's become an explosion like i have a lot of thoughts but I think, like i think that the marvel story the reason marvel has engendered so much fan support over the years is because to a degree marvel fanboys feel responsible for marvel's success Mm-hmm. Okay, because they supported Iron Man, and that inspired Disney to, to make buy them. Marvel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. and then they've kept on, you know, rolling the dice over twenty movies. Well, okay? I think I think and that it's built to DC this, fans have but, supported every movie. But, you know, but, maybe not the outside audience, but everybody who's a DC fan has supported yeah, every one of these movies. But at the same time. Marvel made the Avengers, okay? If the Avengers had come out next to Justice League, okay? The Avengers did less than Justice League in terms of building the universe Mm -hmm. of Marvel, Mm -hmm. okay? Justice League did more to expand the universe, hypothetically. But that's because Avengers had five movies before it to build. Well, so did... So well, yeah. You know, the same uh, I think, well, but yeah, okay. But, they like, built their worlds in different ways. Yeah. But both movies are so similar mm-hmm. that it's annoying. But isn't that the fault of the of the of WB then? And potentially, well, that's, if that's you want to think people, about it, Zack Snyder and Joss Whedon. People, and, that's why people have, you know, have all this negative will built up towards DC. Because... WB has had these cards since the, the 80s. 80s. And they haven't played They could them. have played this hand since and the I 80s. Think, and a they lot teased. of that is, and I do, and I think that's part of the problem too, is the very fact that Marvel st- struck mm-hmm. earlier. I think that's that's the saddest part to me, is I think some of the very reason this is even happening is just movies. the fact that they started earlier. That they started 10 years ago and not 5 years ago. And I think, and yeah, like, and I think that a lot, I, that's the thing, I think like, a lot of this is not some simple, like, oh, it's just because they're better and they're worse. No, I think it really is, a lot of it is complicated, and a lot of it is, we go back to the to the beginning, War, like, Warner Brothers doesn't want to do the work. They wanted to start, hit the ground running, you know what I mean? And they can't. If Warner's was smart. In 2008, when they had the Dark Knight, when they had Iron Man, when mm-hmm. they saw the possibility, they should have started, started then. then. But maybe they didn't have the capital. 
that's where, if you're ready for it, I have a little Stevens Conspiracy Theory Corner. Oh, I want to hear it. I have two... Stevens Conspiracy. Conspiracy Theories. So then I have the capital. Two Conspiracy Theories. Two. Okay, one. One. First mm -hmm. Conspiracy Theory. Mm -hmm. It involves our Treasury Secretary, Steve Mnuchin. <laughs> okay. All right? Okay. What was... Oh, it was the, the most, crash. What? No, listen. What was the controversial poster image for Man of Steel? Um, wasn't it with the tw not the Twin Towers? No. Uh, Superman in handcuffs. Oh, okay. Being you know, I don't remember that. Being uh, Superman in handcuffs mm -hmm. was one of the posters they had for this movie, mm -hmm. which was kind of an anti-immigrant sort of message. You know what I mean? And there were so many Christian This is before over to, uh, Donald listen, Trump, though. Listen. Okay, I'm listening. So Steve Mnuchin sees Man of Steel. Mm -hmm. He sees this overflow of Christian overtones. Mm -hmm. He sees this anti-immigration sentiment. He gets on board, mm -hmm. okay, after Man of Steel, mm -hmm. and starts throwing down money mm -hmm. and producing BVS Suicide Squad Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. Okay? The theme of BBS is kind of a very anti-immigrant sort of rhetoric. Definitely, yes. Is it possible Steve Mnuchin has controlled or directed public conversation through these films? Suicide Squad is a celebration of the prison industrial complex. Oh, yeah. And minorities are inherently all bad. Mm -hmm. And women are stupid. And slutty. Is that where we're, crazy. Is that where we're going? Right? And that's what I you said. Could see I remember this. I said that. I said that the uber masculine mm -hmm. kind of it's it is in, in terms of twenty seventeen. It is unfor and that's another thing that's pissing me off. Because I think that's why Wonder Woman another reason why Wonder Woman succeeded, because Wonder Woman bucked against this concept. And Jenkins is what it seems like yes. fought for her vision. Exactly. And what and, she wants to do. And the thing, no, and I, I don't disagree with you. I do think there is a problem in the DC universe of using these traditionalized, very heavy, punitive type of, yeah, like I do. I think there's a problem. Conspiracy theory number two. I think that's a, I think that is a associated with it. Can I, okay, I'm sorry. And then we'll, and I'll respond, I guess. This is the producers they made man of steel so they make money they made man the of failure. steel they knew we can't keep up with fucking disney mm. pumping out 20 fucking movies mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay mm -hmm. we need to get people on board so they get rat pack entertainment on board mm -hmm. to produce the rest of these movies mm -hmm. and then they probably have some sort of deal where they're like all right the money we make off of this movie we're going to use it to pay for this next movie and mm -hmm. advertise the next movie and then if you guys want, we'll roll this over, and you guys will finally make your money back, get the big win out, mm -hmm. when we put out Justice League. And what happens when we put out Justice League? For some reason, we change from making it into two movies, into, into one, one movie, movie, but it's still the same price, mm -hmm. and now it's $300 million, mm -hmm. the price of one movie. So now you just invested double into the last movie that you're supposed to get paid out double for, and now, no one gets to turn a profit off that movie because it's considered a, a financial failure. Yeah. Okay? So WB ain't gotta pay their little Steve Mnuchin, psycho fucking banker, rat pack, mm -hmm. rapist partners, okay, to build their universe. And they've done all the capital investment, hypothetically, to market and launch their DC brand. Okay? Because... Before Avengers came out, it was unsolid ground. Yes. Okay, every movie felt like, okay, this might be the last chance we get at this. And if Avengers had been a failure, if Avengers had not been this as died. successful as Avengers was, this would, would have died. okay, it would have died. Yes. And if and the the elements that make Avengers a success and what it is are not inherent to Kevin Feig mm -hmm. 
Feige, sorry. Or is it Feige or Feige? I'm pretty sure it's Feige. Uh, to Kevin Feige are inherent to Joss Whedon. Joss okay, Whedon. No, 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 no. We're talking about conspiracy theories. Stop jumping sorry. the gun and you know that that was I'm my fucking thing. That was my point. That was my point, and I don't want to hear it out of your mouth. He is taking my points. He's man stealing from me. Man, man stealing? No, that's a stupid thing. But no, I, like I man think stealing. man oh, stealing. Yeah. Just man stealing. would not just be stealing. Ugh. Anyway, I think that your two conspiracy theories are actually very salient. I do think it's potential. This could be like a whole producer's thing. But I also think that your first point is probably very accurate into what is kind of the problem with these stories hitting emotionally. I do think they have a very... like they, we, we were talking about it when the, uh, when they, we got out of Justice League. The problem is they're making 80s movies. Zack Snyder's trying to make an 80s action film is, in a it, 2000s no, world. And, and they're, they're, they're trying to make, at least with the first few movies, at least the first three movies, they were trying way too hard to put these movies that are supposed to be like fun popcorn beat-em-ups. Yes, into these dark right. places. Even if they have dark themes and stuff, you're taking them to politically yeah. troublesome Some places. Controversy. Without, no, no, no. On here's, purpose. And here's the thing. You want to do that? There's nothing that's necessarily wrong with that, but you have to follow through. You can't introduce these complicated concepts and then not, like, take them to a point. And that's the problem, too, is that I feel like Zack Snyder... And especially in BVS, there were way too many of those points he was trying to make. Mm -hmm. And instead of focusing on one or two and taking them to their narrative point, he focused on 15 of them. Mm -hmm. And so you can't, where do you go? You know what I mean? Like your face, you're, you're trying to deal with the whole idea of he, what, I don't necessarily think that it is a bad concept that he wanted to explore Superman as a Christ narrative. Because I don't necessarily think he's off the wrong track that if somebody like Superman came down right now in our reality, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be like, oh my fucking God, it's Jesus. You know what I mean? Like, and until he's resurrected, we don't love him? A seemingly, no, and to a seemingly like, and you know what I mean? Like super impossibly strong being that can be anywhere mm -hmm. and it has the power of five million nuclear bombs we'd all be vomiting in fear and also like, oh, Jesus. Like, we would totally be doing that. However, I don't think that just because you want to explore a Christ narrative doesn't mean your movie needs to be a fucking downer. I don't think that you need that. I think that's the problem. He was trying to do Passion of the Superman, and I don't think you need to do Passion of the Superman. I think there's totally a way Zack to Snyder, explore Zack Snyder, the mightiness Zack that is Snyder Superman. Likes the metal with the, parts of, of Jesus, like thorns and pain I, and suffering. Yeah, but and not the fucking happy but I think drinking that, water I think wine that bullshit that, Jesus. Well, I think that that creatively okay. hinders him. Because he's not willing to kind of take those narratives and learn how to work with them. I'm not saying he has to have the same comedic tone as all of the Marvel movies have. Because I'm sorry, every one of them have had it and I don't give a fuck what you say. Well, they've absorbed it. That's they've absorbed it. their tone. That's what they realize. Moving on, I will talk about that in a second. I'm just saying that I don't think that he needed that. He could have had his own. But I really do feel his problem is he loves melodrama. And melodrama can work for you if you know how to play it. And I don't always think he understands for an audience what they want to see. And also, I think another problem with these movies is... Okay, let's now let's move on to, like, Avengers. Okay. And one of the reasons why I'm irritated. We were talking about this. I think... That when Avengers, Marvel's fans think about the great Avengers movies, or great, you know what I mean? They're only thinking about like five or six of them, okay? I I think when Iron Man came out, it was the whole, oh my god, oh my god, the potential, right? People got excited. Mm -hmm. But then The Incredible Hulk came out, nobody really liked that movie. No, wait. Okay? Wait, wait, wait. if you want to like, all right, Iron Man came out, people were excited because Sam Jackson showed up at the end, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. Because they were like, mm -hmm. all right, they set up Warmonger, mm -hmm. they had a villain, mm -hmm. 
all the things we can do. They follow that up with Iron Man 2. People shit all over Mickey Roar. Okay, but people before that, Incredible Hulk came out. Whiplash. When Incredible Hulk came out, yeah. people didn't really like it that much. Mm-hmm. They thought it was okay, but they thought it was way better than the fucking angry version. And mm-hmm. I think I think that the only reason the Incredible Hulk people would talk about it fondly is because in comparison to the Ang Lee version, which was like, yeah. what the hell's Crouching Tiger hidden? What the fuck is that? Which, like, you with know what respect I mean? to the Ang Lee version, it is a fucking visual delight. Yes, it is a visual delight. It is like he, fucking Ang Lee very much has the same problem as Zack, Ang Lee very much has the same problem that Zack Snyder has. Zack Snyder is a beautiful visual director. I will never, ever, ever say otherwise. He's visually stunning. He does beautiful shots, but the substance is not there when it comes to, mm-hmm. and it's not about substance like I need. Cause listen to me, like I don't give a fuck what people say. Every one of these Marvel movies are the same thing too. Here's your superhero, isn't he amazing? Oh, here's a bad guy. You know You're kind of like, uh, and then he defeats the bad guy. Moving on. Oh, here's a snippet. This is gonna be a big deal in Avengers: Infinity War. You know Every what? one of the Marvel movies has been like that. Okay, so. I don't think that it's about necessarily the formula because the formula is there for every single one of these. I think it's about the characters. Do you like these people? Do you root for these people? And I think that's the problem. Zack Snyder couldn't connect with the audience for us to root for Superman, for us to root for Batman, for us to, you know what I mean? He couldn't do it. The only character he had people rooting for was in BBS when Wonder Woman appeared for five minutes. Because why? Because she came and she knew who she was about. She smiled. She came out. She, she smiled. smiled. Her she her fucking she, she can't Exactly. She connected with the audience immediately. They brought her in. She was, first of all, she was the mysterious character that was kind of wandering around looking sexy. So you were like, oh, wow, what's she about? So first of all, you immediately have a connection of you're interested in her character because you want to know more about her. You didn't give us too much. How is it the only character? You didn't give us too much of her. You gave her just, you gave us just good enough pieces, right? So we're like, what's she about? What's she about? What's she about, right? And then when you finally have her come out and make her debut, it is to this thrilling sequence that had that just what you know we're dealing with another giant stupid golem monster but yet she comes in and like you said she's know who she is and knows what she's about and she jumps in there with her sword up with her fucking lasso mm-hmm. firing and she's like like it's no it, it's it's almost like she had been waiting for everyone to arrive in her movie. yeah She's exactly. like, oh, you guys finally made it to my fucking, fucking movie. movie. Yeah, like, here I you go. I was waiting for some shit to happen. It's, it, but I'm serious, though. She connected with the audience immediately because the way they set her up was interesting. Gal Gadot had the charisma to sell it. And then, in that moment when she comes out in a blaze of glory, Superman and Batman look fucking like, like children compared to her. Like, they do. Like, she's enjoying herself. Like, you know, there's Batman trying just not to die because, like, oh, my God, I'm too old for this shit. And then there's Superman kind of like, I'm really still super serious about everything and I, I feel conflicted about all this shit. And she's just like, guys, let's just, let's just punch this fucking bad guy and, and let's go home and, and have some tea. and You know what I mean? Let's figure this out. So, like, that was the thing. Was that she was the most successful. And I think that's the problem that Zack Snyder's had. I don't necessarily think that his narrative has been, the, it's really has been his character work. I think his character work has been the weakest. I, and same thing with David Ayers in Suicide Squad. He focused on every character we didn't want to focus on. Why the fuck do I want to fucking pay attention to fucking boring ass Enchantress? Yeah. For the whole movie, I don't care about her. She sucks. Trash ring in the sky, whatever. But like the characters that were actually cool and interesting, and I'm sorry, even controversial as Joker, Jared Leto Joker, who I think that if he had used him properly, could have been really fun but and could have been a fun bad guy. Was a reaction to Guardians of the Galaxy. Exactly. Like every time but they like make I a said, decision, that's the problem. But they make they made these decisions exactly. in a reactive way. Exactly. It is and a, no, and that is the weakness of the WB. That is the weakness of the WB execs, and that's also the weakness of these directors and writers. The character work needs to be there. So anyway, so really and truthfully, that is the only reason that I think that the Marvel movies have succeeded because for the most part, the Marvel movies are just as formulaic. I remember seeing someone a critique, a disparaging critique was Marvel, the world's biggest, most expensive TV series. 
Yeah. That's kind of what it's fucking become, okay? Every episode has a cliffhanger and has, ooh, new and exciting characters. Or look, what here's a throwback. What are we setting up for the next episode? Tune in next year, kids, when we fucking conclude. So, like, I don't want people, but people are sitting here. But it's, it's. Shh, can I finish? What? Bitch, you've been I'm talking kidding. for 30 minutes. I'm kidding. Fuck, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. What were you going to say? But it's, it's like the, it's. In a way, it's taking you back to like the old school film serials yes. where superheroes first got their chance to yes. be on. The and that is, but well, okay, that's a good thing. But like I'm saying, I'm saying that when people, people now looking at the Marvel universe, and especially like when they compare it to DC, the Marvel fanboy bullshit, they want to fucking suck the dick of every Marvel movie. And I'm sorry, they're not thinking of every Marvel movie when they're sucking the dick. They're thinking about Iron Man. They didn't really like Incredible Hulk that much. They really didn't like Iron Man 2. Thor, a lot of people found it boring, okay? Captain America, the first Avenger, I don't people telling you. I found it kind of boring. I fell asleep. Mm-hmm. And people didn't understand what Marvel was trying, trying to, to do, do, like, tone-wise, like, making it and like a even 40s movie. When you, even when you come back to it, how many of those original movies are people re-watching? How many of those are people putting in their DVD player over and over and over again? Obviously, some of you are like, well, I still do it. Yeah, you and, like, five of your friends. But I'm talking about okay. in a general sense. But even when, when you you're do, doing that. We did the Marvel. We've done the Marvel we Marathon did the Marvel many Marathon. times. And there are parts of the Marvel Marathon that's that are slog. slog. That's slog. Okay. Just like okay. BB. Yes, that's slog. that's slog. And so, and I'm sorry. So here's my point that I was getting at and your point about Joss Whedon that I want. I just want to quit because I'm I want. waiting for you to get back to it. Okay. Over. Here's where I'm getting after I Yeah, shut it. up, because I have a lot to say. Here's where I'm getting pissed. Shut up. Shut up. Here's where I am the cohortress, damn it. Here's where I'm here's the point that I'm getting pissed off now. And this is where we're at in 2017. All of a sudden, Joss Whedon has become the devil of DC, the villain of Marvel, okay? Um People are, he has become, he's lived long enough to see himself become the villain. And I think that you're all a bunch of ungrateful shitheads. Do, here, now let's get complicated. Do I think Joss Whedon and his work should be critiqued? And we're, Of course I do. I am the biggest Buffy fan on earth, but I have a very nuanced, and I do, and no matter what, I guess I do have a soft spot for Joss Whedon. But I also have grown up. I'm an older person now. I'm not a 12-year-old anymore that's crying because Angel and Buffy broke up for a week on the school bus. I'm not doing that anymore. Listening to Sarah McLaughlin over and over again. I'm not doing that anymore. Not anymore. Anyway, my point is, is that I've grown up. I've gotten a more nuanced love of Joss Whedon. And I do completely understand some of the critiques that his work, especially now, he needs a much more... He, he his His feminism is not as... In, it has become a little dated and a little aged, and there are things that aren't perfect about him. Even or even some of his writing, yes, he has kind of a formula. He his um, first of all, he is an auteur. An auteur does not mean, and I'm not saying auteur like he's a G. I just mean auteur in the simplest sense of the word means a director tends to have like Spielberg, a unique voice, a unique voice that he tells a story mm-hmm. the same way over and over and over again. And I think that Joss Whedon, by want of having so much more exposure recently. People have been seeing his voice, and some people are like, oh, I'm so sick of it, whatever. I don't, you know what, I don't have any problem with you critiquing him that way, or critiquing his feminism, or, you know what I mean? But, like, to to sit here and read some of the tweets that I read that said, Joss Whedon ruined Avengers and then ruined Justice League, you are a bunch of ungrateful fucking shitheads. Let me tell you something. If Marvel the Avengers had failed, you would not have ever seen Iron Man. You would not have seen The Winter Soldier. You wouldn't have seen Guardians of the Galaxy. You wouldn't have seen any of these movies. When people think about Marvel and their favorite Marvel films, when you guys suck off Marvel, you're sucking off The Avengers. You're sucking off The Winter Soldier. You're sucking off Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2. And you're sucking off... I, I guess Thor Ragnarok is the most recent one. You guys are not... Nobody... None of you are really coming out here and looking at... Also... The sum of the work. Because, first of all, y'all hated Thor 2 even more than you hated Thor 1. Y'all didn't like Iron Man 3 that much. Y'all didn't really like 
an Age of Ultron was a mixed bag. A lot of people liked it and some people did it. And that was that. And see, Age of Ultron is why y'all decided y'all could just throw Joss away. Which is not to say that I don't think that Joss shouldn't have put his hat up and moved on. But before because Age I, of Ultron, everyone knew that Joss Whedon was the source of goodness miss that for the gave Marvel us Universe. And just because he made some choices in Age of Ultron that you didn't like does not mean that he gets to become the villain in your work. It makes no fucking sense. It pisses me off how the internet has both the longest memory and, and yet the memory. shortest at all. You know what it is? They have the longest memory for stoop for for they have the longest they have the longest memory in terms of like people's deeds and actions, but the shortest in terms of emotional response. Like literally like they can remember everything this man has ever done, but the shortest emotional response of how exactly he made you feel when Avengers came out and everybody was so... I remember how nervous we were about Avengers. Everyone was nervous. Everyone was like, whoa, they're going to pull this off? Are they going to pull this off? And he fucking pulled it off to the point where people were cheering in that audience. Yeah, people so, were screaming. What's, and, what's insane too is Avengers is Joss Whedon's only second feature film that he ever, ever did. did. Yep. He directed, he produced a lot of fucking TV. Yep. But as far as feature films, Serenity. Anybody's second feature film was the Avengers. Is on caliber with the Avengers. Yeah. It's like it's like Tarantino making Pulp Fiction. Exactly. Okay? And no one wants to give him the fucking credit. No one wants to give him the credit it's for the like, success of Avengers. Exactly. And I'm sorry. That's, anymore. That's crap and that's trash. And you are ungrateful. And I'm sorry, but y'all need to think about yourselves and collect yourselves before you... Now, are you going to tell me, well, okay, just because he did something good, does it mean he should... Mm -hmm. Of course, he... I think that it was mm -hmm. good for him to take... I think he wanted to take a step back after Age of Ultron. I think that it became too big. He realized that this is becoming way too big for me. This is becoming too much. I have to worry about these people's 15 ideas, and I just want to worry about mine. And I do think that's why he was in a unique place to take Avengers, the first one, and really take it to the best point, because he was willing to take those perspectives. He was willing to take those characters, because no matter what we had had, those origin perspectives, to essentially they were fresh. As a team, they were completely fresh. Mm -hmm. In the second one, yes, you're right. They were no longer fresh as a team. And we had to kind of explore, and he kind of had to but do that. And, still, he, and there were a lot of things going on that maybe he, Marvel Studios and him crashed and had a head too, and he had to figure still, that out. Even through all that, all the stuff that he set up and he introduced In and he Ultron. built into the Hulk, yeah, into the Hulk's yeah. character, which he's he's more responsible yeah. for Mark Ruffalo as the, yeah, Hulk, as the and Hulk and all the good moments then, he has exactly. than anything else. Every yeah. joke in Thor Ragnarok yep. that was building on the Hulk's history yep. is a direct, direct result, result of, of Joss, Joss Whedon and his humor. And I, I really, and that's the other thing, is that all of a sudden it's become this attack on his writing style and his style of humor. And especially for Justice League, they were like, how dare he ruin it? First of all, bitches, before y'all start... Zack Snyder, before he left due to the untimely death of his daughter, may she rest in peace, okay, had already asked Joss Whedon to come in to punch up his script. So the then, studio brought, the studio brought yeah. in, hypothetically, Zack Snyder was working with him. They asked, okay, punch the script. So I'm sorry, before you even start shitting, they asked him to come there. He was not there as like, because he barged his fucking way in. He was asked to come in. He was asked to do this. He was already asked to fix narrative problems in the script. And then when Zack Snyder's daughter died and he had to leave, they said to, jo I'm sure the studio came and swept it and said, Joss, this movie can't be more than two hours long. Joss, this movie needs to be this. Josh, this movie needs to be that. And you know what? Josh Whedon probably as a favor to his friend, because I do, do believe that Zack Snyder and him are friends. On, uh, you know what I mean? Or at least co-worker friends. Or uh, co uh, work pl workplace proximity associates. Whatever the fuck. I do think that he came in as a favor to Zack and tried to do this. And I also think that selfishly... According to Cinema Blend. Uh-huh. Zack Snyder is Asked the one that convinced him to come and finish the film for him. Okay. So, so see, this isn't even like some producers nope. being like, please, I'll give you yeah. so much money. No. Just help us out. Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder's like, hey, a my fucking daughter died. My daughter's dead. I hate life. You need to do this. You're the only one that could do this. You've done this before. Yes. 
Please help us out. Yes. I don't want to be responsible. So I don't want to. So when I see people online shitting on him, hating on him, giving him shit for two bad jokes. Yes, bad jokes. But like they're not the sum of the parts. It really upsets me because I feel that it's not just an insult to him. It's an insult to Zack Snyder. Also, Zack, Zack Snyder, Snyder wanted to keep that him. release date. Thank you. Okay. Zack Snyder wanted and to really, keep that And really and truthfully, date. Justice League as a movie should have been delayed. After they should have pushed it all the summer, summer. And, the, and they yeah. should have put their dick right yep. next to Marvel's dick. They should have dick. put their dick right next to Marvel's dick. They should have worked on it more. They should have fucking taken a break. They should have... Saved up some money, had a big, had a charity big sale, given Superman time to shave his fucking face, and fucking done the movie the right way. So really, so much of that was the choices that were made outside of Joss Whedon. So for to for people to come and try to shift, and this is the problem with a clusterfuck of what happened behind the scenes on the Justice League movie. And I'm sorry, it was a cluster, a managerial clusterfuck. That I will unequivocally say. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to point fingers at somebody. Zack Snyder this. Joss Whedon that. Dobby whatever this. And it probably is a mix of all four of all and, those that, and yeah. all those elements. But I think another person who's responsible for all this too is the fucking fanboys. Absolutely. All right? It's, Absolutely. It's, it's this fucking, like, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Like, it's this, uh, this, like, polarized reaction. To everything. All right? Where you can't just be like, yeah, I wasn't into it. I wasn't feeling this part. Yeah. It became like so vitriolic. It is vitriolic. After BBS DOJ mm -hmm. that, you know, before Zack Snyder's daughter died, mm -hmm. people said and made horrible the things. most yeah. horrible jokes, jokes about him. About Zack Snyder. Now, and I told okay? Steven the other day, I know, I told Steven the other day, I said, and you know, I've never, look, Zack well, Snyder. Duke's Jingle Cuddles. I have never, like, I, I won't me. lie, I have totally, like, talked shit about Zack Snyder, but I don't think I've ever been as cruel as some of these people were. Like, some of these people were like, oh my god, like, and, and the thing, I don't, you know what, and if I have, whatever. But my point being that, yeah, you guys, it's not, this is the thing, it's so it's just a funny turnaround, because you guys were never big fans of Snyder. And, and then now, unfortunately, for cut. and now, and, 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 and I think that, uh, a sad thing is, I think the reason why this happened is, I told Steven, everyone likes an underdog. Zack Snyder had a really shitty mm -hmm. run of luck. He lost someone very mm -hmm. close to him. It's very sad. Mm -hmm. And I think that that personal trauma influenced how people saw him. Mm -hmm. Now, I mm -hmm. do. I think people are thinking, his daughter died and he can't even see the vision of his film come to pass. I super think that's what it is. And if you don't think that's what it is, I think you need to examine yourself. And again, the, 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 after the whole Joss Whedon bullshit has just gotten ridiculous. Like, because it really is so frustrating to see you people shitting and shitting and shitting on this. And you know what it is, too? Now it's become, it's very much become this Rousseau versus Whedon thing. You know what I mean? Oh, Rousseau Brothers It Rousseau has. Because Foundation. Winter... Because... And here's the thing. Winter Soldier was very good. Mm -hmm. Right? Winter Soldier was very mm -hmm. good. Yeah. And Winter Soldier made people think, oh, we could do... We could do this a different way. You know what I mean? But... In, and instead of this becoming, okay, we do this a different way and, like, we have different visions. When Age of Ultron... I think... It, yeah, because Winter Soldier came out before Age of Ultron. Right? Um... Yes. yes. Yeah. So it was like a lot of stuff happened where people got frustrated because they didn't like the a lot of the controversy split and the, the verses became because of Black Widow. Because Black Widow's character they didn't like the way that Black Widow Hulk. was characterized in Whedon's film. They thought that they she wanted her yeah. to hook up with a white boy. Yeah, Black I'm sorry. Boy. First of all, a lot of this hate that's being gotten is not for any altruistic reasons for her character. It's because y'all wanted her to fuck Captain America. So for those people who are shitting on Joss Whedon because your ship didn't happen, y'all can fuck right mm -hmm. the fuck off. Y'all are immature little babies. Moving on. Mm -hmm. And Some people of the... felt uncomfortable in Age of Ultron. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. With her dealing with her own, you know, trauma. They felt some of the dialogue that he wrote was, uh, was unfair and sexist. And, and here's the thing. I can see the interpretation. I don't necessarily think it's interpreted that way, but I, but I can see, but I don't, 
But I can't, like, forget, I can't fight against the fact that, yes, I could totally see you reading it like that and getting pissed off, because that makes sense. But here's my thing. Here's my problem with all of this. At the end of the day, she was just a fucking sidekick in Captain America. In every movie. In every movie. So really, so really, when you want to shit, you want to shit on this characterization, this characterization, no. I said it, and I said it when Age of Ultron came on. The problem, the reason why Black Widow gets all this shit, and every choice they make about her gets all this shit, and so it point fingers, is because when you only have this thing, one representation of women in your fucking movies, she gets all, she has to be everything to everybody. Mm-hmm. And you haven't even given her her own solo film in order for her to have her own perspective, be her own be herself. You could do a cool Mission Impossible style thriller spy movie with Black Widow. You could do something really interesting with her. But instead, she has been everybody's fucking psychic. And before you tell me, well, Hawkeye's a psychic too. I'm like, that's not the point. Okay? Fine. You want to do, do a, do a, uh, fine, do the sidekick movie. Do Black Widow and Hawkeye. But give them more to work with. Because I'm sorry, she has been the sidekick for everybody. So it sucks because, and even more frustratingly so, she has been the only woman in the Marvel Universe with any sort of like, besides Peggy, besides Peggy. And Pe- and people loved Agent Carter so much, she got her own TV show and it sucks that she's dead because people love her. And Scarlet Witch didn't even get Cap- to a good guy until Even Captain Civil America War. can't get away from her because he wants to fuck her granddaughter, a weirdo. And I'm like, weirdo. Don't we all? I, I'm sorry. People didn't like that choice. That was a Rousseau choice, motherfuckers, right? So, who are, so whose choice was that? Who wrote that? What? Yeah, it was a yeah, Rousseau choice. Yeah, it was a Rousseau choice because they directed mm-hmm. fucking A and it was Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely who also wrote Winter Soldier with them. That was their choices. Y'all made those choices to try to make Captain America fuck Peggy's granddaughter. Moving on. But my point being that there has been a dearth of female characters that are, like, really there. Steve, Joss Whedon tried. He created Maria Hill, okay? He put Maria Hill... He didn't create the character, but he, he put didn't her in the, the movie. You know what I mean. He, he elevated put, her. He elevated her mm-hmm. in that movie. He mm-hmm. saw the need for more, okay? And he tried to have her. He even had her in Age of Ultron. She's there in Age of Ultron. He tried to push her. Y'all didn't want her. None of y'all running around going, Maria Hill! None of y'all. You didn't even put her on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., man. None of y'all. None of y'all did that shit. She could have been the star of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Pisses me off. None of y'all did exactly. They brought Coulson back from the fucking dead, which Joss Whedon did not like at all. Because Joss Whedon believes in stakes. When someone's dead, they're dead. Joss Whedon wanted to kill Hawkeye in Age of Ultron. They wouldn't fucking let his ass. That's why he ended up killing up Quicksilver. Because he needed someone to kill. And that's just the way Joss Whedon works. He always likes to kill people. He's I mean, that's one of his. Yeah, he was an offering. He needs an offering to the fucking writing. To gods. the dramatic he does. stakes. But ha- it would have been so much better if Hawkeye had died. It would have yeah. been so much better if and they had been brave enough, and he could still come back. It would bring been, everyone back anyway. It would have been brave enough. It would have been brave enough for you guys to fucking kill Hawkeye, so that you could have some actual but fucking. But you know what? They but probably didn't was. Do it. No, they wanted. They didn't want to fucking. Well, if if you know they're gonna keep on using Quicksilver and X Menville, we don't want to sell their X Men. So, yeah, exactly. Blah, blah, blah. You know, it's bullshit. It's fucking kill them both. Just the same business bullshit. Exactly. You know what I mean? It is, and that's the problem. That's See, what so that's what piss. That's what pisses me off is that this whole concept yeah. that these Marvel fanboys have that somehow mm-hmm. the vision of their movies isn't interfered with in studio mm-hmm. interference and bullshit. That's crap. And plus, I'm, the fact that most. Marvel movies uh-huh. have formulaic and extremely similar plots. Yes. You know, Ant-Man is yes. formulaic to Iron Man. It's the it same as Doctor Strange. The only thing that sets you know? them apart is that they have managed to find a slightly different tone in that they go, okay, for Ant-Man, this is like a funny robbery caper, mm-hmm. right? In Winter Soldier, this is like a spy thriller. Mm-hmm. But the end of but the day, in regards the to concepts build, are the it, same. And it doesn't build the universe the way a real 
comic book universe would be would. built, yeah. you wouldn't kill off your villains at the end of each Every movie. Every one of these movies. But you just, you only want to keep on paying the hero salaries. Exactly. You don't want to pay these villain villains salaries. salaries. Which you is what's exciting one. about Justice League having and keeping villains around yeah. and teasing a fact we're actually going to see. A team of heroes possibly versus None of their villains. villains except for Zod have died. And Zod, frankly, came back. Need, as Doomsday. As Doomsday. And frankly, he needed to die because Zod, you can't have an Powerful. evil Superman. Yeah, like you can't he just either do, needs to go to the dimension and never be seen again. again or, or exactly, can't. exactly. You have two ways to work yeah. it. He should have just fucking thrown him into the fucking altar. Plus, Superman can't yeah. be the last Kryptonian if there's fucking like Kryptonians around. Exactly. So it's like that's what's frustrating is, but yet yeah, exactly DC has actually attempted to not kill off every villain that fucking exists. They, in fact, they even said let's have a big cadre of villains that we can play with. You know what movie, I mean? Yeah. In the whole movie, let's do all things. So they actually have attempted to do that. And DC has done the cool thing of sort of you know like the one thing people shit on D sort of don't give DC credit for is DC in their movie universe has left themselves open to the point of, like, everything exists already. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, Batman's already been fighting crime for 20 years. Yes. All his villains are established. We just haven't seen them yet. Yes. You know, all this mythology does exist. Exactly. We just haven't seen it yet, but we can talk about it. Exactly. You know? While Marvel... Only if it doesn't, has built if it hasn't what existed, in what you've seen, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist, and if it's dead, it's dead. It's dead, exactly. And, so and the Mandarin income locally, the Mandarin income. Even if you tease them for three movies and fucked yeah. us, and everybody shit on Iron, Iron Man, Man three, three because of the Mandarin. Everyone shit on mm-hmm. Iron Man two. Yep. Okay. It has not been a clean twenty no, movie. No, it hasn't. Fucking marathon. Bro. And and I frankly feel that some of those ratings for those movies have been inflated because I feel they get the goodwill. I do. And and even though their run tomato scores, like critics have stayed on their side. Yes. Like critics, they if anything they've been making these movies to please critics, to please people that don't give a shit about superhero movies. That just wanna see and, and and on one end, I can understand the argument for that because you do want to make a movie that's going to appeal to not just these six for sure nerds. six people, yeah. but at the same time, like I don't know, like it's just it's it's fr- it's it's not that I want to shit on a, like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, like. In terms of, oh, because they're the critic darlings. I don't want to be the sad person that's like, and you then, just don't like us because you're not our friend. That's mm-hmm. stupid. I, I'm looking at it from, trying to look at it from a balanced perspective. The the DC movies have not been strong. And we, they relied on these tropes and these too, mm-hmm. these too many themes and these two, they're bloated and they're, and, mm-hmm. the, and like I said, all of that wouldn't matter. The character work's not there. And I, you, you know I'm right. The character work is not there mm-hmm. to connect us to these and characters. But at the same time, I feel that Marvel, if you, when you're looking at Marvel, and these people are looking at Marvel, I think that character work can become a weakness there too. Mm-hmm. I think Joss Whedon, one of the reasons why they don't like Joss Whedon is because he likes to focus on character work a lot because he feels like, because he wants to, Quicks, okay, think about Quicksilver in Age of Ultron. You knew him for one movie. And his death was actually sad. Mm-hmm. I felt bad for Quicksilver. I mm-hmm. actually cried. Let me tell you something. I really liked Thor Ragnarok. It was a fun movie. But I... Never felt Didn't worried. feel worried for any of these yeah, people. There no stakes. There were no stakes. And even and as Thor's much as I love Taika Waititi's interpretation... There's no fucking pain, you know? There's, There's no, no like, pain. These guys that you see the Warriors people, 3 Those people, exactly. The Warriors 3 died and you didn't shed a fucking tear. You were like, huh? Oh, okay. Moving on. Like, it was crazy. Yeah. Like, you, I'm sorry, like, that was Taika Waititi's movie. Like, I liked like, it's, it. It's, it's, in a way, it's disrespectful yeah. to the other Thor movies. To It's sort of, in a way, saying, like, all the shit that you guys were working on, everyone thinks it was a piece of shit joke. And anywhere. so it's gone, exactly. So we can just kill it and no one cares. And no one cares. Like, and oh. that's kind of like, it, it is, it's really kind of, it is disrespectful. Like, like it there is... was something heartwarming in the first Thor movie. 
with him when, and his friends. When his friends show up and yeah. see him in that diner. Yeah. And, you know, they're like, oh, who let this Ren fair in here? You know what I mean? It, it was, it was, it was, it was sweet, you know? It's, it's not fair. It's not fair. These movies. I do, I, I'm sorry, that's the thing. I, I don't think, get a fair I don't chance. think they get a fair, I don't think the DC gets a fair chance. And I do think that some of that is due to the W, and I think that part of the fault of that is the WB and their executive mishandling because they keep trying. That's the problem. They keep trying to chase Marvel and maybe you should look at the Marvel is not as perfect as you think they are. But this is the problem. This is capitalism versus creativity because it's about money. It doesn't matter if it's not perfect. What matters is they make millions and billions of dollars and we keep getting shit on. You know what I mean? And so it's kind of like that's the problem. And they also have that measuring stick. To put themselves but against, yes, and you know what's what I mean? well, what's more frustrating for me is this: when WB did say, "Okay, Patty Jenkins, we're going to give you your way." When WB did allow their own creative shit happen, what happened? Wonder Woman fucking blew everyone out of the fucking water. When they allowed their Not- directions to have vision and also didn't try to control so much, and maybe also give them a helping hand. To form their, you know, to really look at the movies mm-hmm. from a perspective and go, okay, what are we doing? Let's find a creative voice. Let's find another creative voice. Not Instead only of trying to that, make- but DC has not been as precious as Marvel has no. been. Okay, Marvel has given you years of TV shows, yeah, and dribbled out so Much- little amount of like cool and superheroes and characters yeah. like they're almost punishing you in yeah. tv shows that like you only get to see humans on tv when, when, Marvel, when agents of shield dude. exactly when agents of i'm sorry agents of shield i stopped watching it because it became insufferable mm-hmm. the when the humans came in it was fucking weak then they did that inhuman special that was apparently so bad but yet when people look at marvel and they think about how terrible that inhumans tv show was mm-hmm. No one is associating that with with, uh, all this with the movies with the, all, all this failure. The even though to be a part of Infinity War. exactly, even though when they first teased all this shit, they, they exactly, that's, what pisses, that's what pisses that's what pisses me off is they were supposed to make an Inhumans movie. They were supposed to do all the, remember that poster and they had supposed all to be an integral the part movies of Infinity War, and then you just plugged in Guardians of the Galaxy yep. and said fuck and it, and you're like a oh, fuck that stupid. Yeah, shit. exactly. So it's like such bullshit that Marvel gets this clean slate because they're in their own way have made many failures. Agents of Shield and experimented. Not age, exactly, and there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but it's just like th- don't sit there and suck them off and say that they can do no wrong because that's false. But when and fucking don't even Flash and that- Supergirl and Arrow have been fucking kissing, kicking ass, doing crossovers over and over. All right, Come DC on, already has all fifty-two plus Earths mm-hmm. established in the Flash universe. Flash has time traveled. Flash has done his own Flashpoint. Flash has fucking done all this kind of crazy shit. He has done so much stuff. But no, WB and DC, they suck. Right? Yeah, exactly. They all suck. And, like, it's frustrating because it's... That's the problem. It's like they don't trust... It, it's all... It, the problem is it's all about this... It's this constant cycling of, like, well, it's about money. It's about this. But when WB has this vision in the films... Let's talk about the film universe. When they, talk, when they put their vision in the film, when they actually have a vision that was you know, different and the thing. That was part of the problem too, is when they initially, when they created the whole DCEU, instead of Wait, doing... it's not called the DCEU. Anymore. It's never was called the DCEU. Whatever, fine. Okay? Okay, I'm sorry. This was a bad joke that everyone's kept on repeating. <gasps> okay, it is not the I'm DC sorry. Extended Universe. The DC Universe. It doesn't have an official fucking trademark name. Fine! Alright, it's just the fucking DC getting... Movie Universe. Okay, fine. And I hate the branding of DCEU because I feel like it's a stamp of failure. Okay, fine. That they're putting on it. Because the idea of it sounds it's extended you know what i mean mm-hmm. as if it's like a protracted like thing fucking okay. aneurysm or something fine i, I will say the dc films the dc movies i think part of the bigger the part of the problem too that warner brothers had was that they didn't do and this is one thing i will give marvel credit for whether or not it has always worked out or not has been a successful in terms of like the film quality they use different directors for their movies Mm-hmm. They don't really rely. They have not 
unlike WB that said, we're just going to use Zack Snyder for everything. And then when they saw that, oh, Zack Snyder. She's not working out. It's not working out. Let's get another. Zach to do all this movie. Yeah, yeah. Like, they should never have, yeah. they should never have said, Zack, you do everything for we'll us. We'll marry you. No, exactly. You That's part of the problem. Right? They should, that is where the experimentation is allowed. But, like you said, you also had a good point where you said, the first few movies of Marvel really are not their best, right? Except maybe, except Iron Man. And then Avengers came out and it blew everything out of the water. Maybe these are the DC growing pains. But yeah. the problem is, because now they've what? They've had five movies and they've had the Justice League movie and whatever. And that the problem is, no one is going to give them a chance to fail and to mm -hmm. succeed. They're not. They're not going to do it. This is the problem. Because like they started late. And so now they have to compete against Disney, against the Marvel shit, all that. So every time they do something that's possibly a misstep. But yeah, but but I don't even know if that's necessarily true because when Wonder Woman wasn't a misstep, that movie made money in droves. So I don't even think that's necessarily well, fair. The thing is I think that if they is... course correct and they fucking figure it out, if Aquaman is a fucking delight and they the continue way, to make delightful films. The way Course correct. I would argue Course correct. that the way that Wonder Woman was a success is better and is more what you want to be than any success yes. Marvel has ever had. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Cuz Wonder Woman's a movie that kept on chugging along, all right, and just kept on making money and drawing people into theaters, mm -hmm. all right? Marvel movies, very entertaining. A lot of people watch them and are interested in them, but they are interested in them for exactly two to three weekends, mm -hmm. and that's it. Yeah. How many times are event. we rewatching? That's movies exactly. are. Yeah. But it's, it's a thing that, you know, I bet you if you pulled any person over 40... Who watched the Marvel movies? Uh -huh. Who watched all the Marvel movies? Uh -huh. Could not tell you the last, the last time, time they yeah. watched. Yeah. Iron Man three. No. Iron Man two. No. Thor: The Dark World. You do it you only know? as like a oh it's a it's like a challenge. Yeah. We did it as a challenge. Oh, can we rewatch all the things? Mm -hmm. Did it as a challenge. And this is the thing. I'm once again. I I'm gonna be totally fair. I'm not gonna sit here and say. There haven't been missteps. It's just, this is not about me trying. This is not about me going, see, Marvel sucks. No, I don't think Marvel sucks. I plainly know that. And this is also not me saying, DC can't, DC's da da. No, because I know DC's fucked up and I know they're not perfect. And I and there's a lot of things that I love about DC just because I love, DC is my first love. I had a Batman birthday cake when I was four years old. I have always loved DC. I watched, you know what I mean? I was never a comic book reader. But I feel that the, that the animated series were so good as to... Yeah, for sure. I think it's unfair for anybody to say because I didn't read comics that I wasn't a DC fan. Because I think that's bullshit. Because I think watching the animated series, just JLA, Batman, all those series, was ju is just as effective as reading the mm -hmm. comic books. In terms of knowing who those characters are, experiencing those characters, I think that just as much set up for narrative, for Teen Titans, all those fucking movies, mm -hmm. you know, all those shows... I don't think that because I haven't been a heavy comic reader and I mostly read graphic novels, that doesn't mean that I'm at a D that I and am a DC fan. DC's done right for nerds. When it comes for to a while, a long time when okay? it comes to animated when series. Marvel's when Marvel's fucking to... every single season of a Marvel animated show, the production quality and the quality of the writing gets inferior. When DC just keeps on, you know, getting better the longer they're. They're allowed to do their animation jobs. Like it's only now that know, they've had some missteps. Now that but... Marvel has money, mm -hmm. they can finally get to DC's yeah. level. Yeah, and to a degree, they have surpassed DC. Yes, but visual in the visual medium. Now in the movie, in this moment, in the business medium. Yeah, I would say in business. In business too, yes. Because because DC script. Because they they turned a four billion dollar yeah. investment. Yeah. Into. Twice that, three times. A that. big win. Yeah, a of big course. Win. Yes, they have, and I I don't disagree. And I do even think that when it comes to comics, like DC's been struggling. You know what I mean? They have the New Fifty Two. Yeah, they've been rebooting, uh, they're rebooting, 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 rebooting because they're trying to get people to come and buy the freaking comic books. And I don't know how Marvel is doing comic book wise, but oh, they're doing really bad. Too. Okay, we'll see. They're both doing bad, but 
people were trying to blame Marvel for like, oh, they're introducing too much diversity or yeah, exactly, you know, like, exactly. Yeah. That's the worst part is that when Marvel was trying to do something different to get people to read the comics, and they dropped off, they were like, oh, it's because of diversity. That's fucking bullshit. Mm-hmm. They were tr- comic books. People like what heroes? People who people who read comic books don't want to admit to themselves that the reason why you're struggling is because comic books are are books. And they're not really doing it for you. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't fucking read. Mm-hmm. And I think that is a shame and a crime. But a lot of people in this fucking country don't fucking read well, anything. Also, because we've built a world now where people Visual, can watch clips yeah. on the fucking internet. Exactly. All the fucking time. Exactly. Like, back in the 90s, we don't encourage... We couldn't fucking watch shit on the fucking yeah. internet. We couldn't. It looked like shit. It was all great. And what's it also unfair. Like no, no, no. And what's bullshit, too. Here's the other bullshit. It's not even about your comics, necessarily. It's actually about how you guys run your business. Because I did just read that big, fancy article about how comic books make money and get tracked for popularity because of that whole diversity-blaming bullshit. And the problem is, your si- your entire way of having to do that is archaic and outdated. The very fact the that you have the printing shit and you have that one company mm-hmm. and it's all about the comic book stores when we not people aren't even going to brick and mortar stores anymore. You're not tracking the digital sales. Mm-hmm. Like that's shit. It's mm-hmm. the same problem that we were having at the time mm-hmm. when we weren't tracking streaming. And they were like, oh, well, we're going to cancel your show. Meanwhile, everyone was watching it on fucking Hulu. Ooh, yeah. And it, now the TV realized, well, we have to fucking catch up. And now you have all these media, digital media companies like Netflix and Hulu and blah, 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 making originals because they know they can get butts in the fucking seats mm. okay. that way. That's the problem. Mm. The co- So the, all that bullshit mm. about people aren't reading comic books, I don't even think that's necessarily true. I think the fact of the matter is your business model is fucking outdated as mm. shit. And it sucks because the problem is who that's going to hurt are the comic book stores. Because if they fully embrace digital, the comic book stores are fucked. Mm. They are. The comic book stores are fucked. They're not totally fucked. A little bit. they already been fucked, though. They've been because fucked, think about how many comic book stores have closed they've down. Been fucked. No, but they could be something else. Yeah. You know what I mean? If they're not afraid to grow, they can still sell comics. There's still, you know, 50, 80 years of comics to sell. Yeah. Okay. There's still toys and yeah. all the other bullshit. A lot stuff. of comic books. And you if can you make a comic book a lot store of, where people can fucking hang yeah, out. A lot of know? the comic book stores that we've gone to that have become, become bigger gaming stores. have become gaming and, and novelty stores. Mm-hmm. They sell pro- toys. Yeah. They sell tchotchkes. They sell pop figures. That's what they're selling because they know the comics are not their bread and butter. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So but that's the thing. It's all about evolution. And I think the problem is... And yeah. Through digital... If you comic book people really wanted to fucking innovate and stuff, you could fucking do super special comics mm-hmm. where, like, you know, instead of, instead of having, like, a splash page that's a regular splash page, you could go through the extra effort with all the money you're saving by not printing shit, and you could fucking, like, animate and, like, yeah. create GIFs and, like, push comic book yeah. art as a medium, mm-hmm. like, forward... Using all the tools you have it just, yeah. in the digital space. I just learned that, like, working in the corporate... You could be selling people special yeah. tablets to read comics. Exactly. Like, you, could be re- you could be selling tablet comic special... No, but special edition yeah, tablets. Yeah, special edition tablets. Like, get your Nook, books, yeah. get your fucking Batman, DC Kindle, whatever, whatever yeah, the fuck. DC Kindle, yeah, I know. I think I, I have discovered... <coughs> I have discovered a lot working in the corporate, corporate America that... Everyone, a lot of what, a lot of what humanity counts as success is a fucking shot, like a (laughs) crapshoot. Like, like I have discovered humanity wise, it's not to say that humans are, humans are extremely innovative, creative, smart people. They can do a lot of things, but at the same time, they also, especially when it's a giant company with hundreds of people Mm -hmm making decisions and pointing fingers, it becomes a clusterfuck. We're monkeys I bet fumbling with a stick are. on fire. <laughs> we're uh, many, in many ways, on some levels, we're super innovative in this, but in many ways, we're not. Even the tech boom now. What is the tech boom? The tech boom is people making apps that fart and then getting, like, millions of dollars. 
the tech boom is a 20 year old kid who made an app that tracks how many times you shake your dick when you pee and he has way too much money like that's like our world our world is a fucking mess okay and it's just like so it's kind of like when we talk about these why don't they do this why don't they maybe they have someone yelling that in the back and then it's just 50 stupid idiots Mm -hmm. in charge like no, we've got to have another meeting about our projections. Like, you know, that's kind of the thing. Whatever. But, like, my point being that that's, once again, capitalism versus creativity. Creativity moves far faster than capitalism and business Mm -hmm. wants it to. Mm -hmm. And all this, we need to catch up, keep up, keep going, keep up. A lot of what they do to keep up is really the same old, same old, wrapped in Mm -hmm. a different box with a new sticker that they're like, yay! And then we as Creativity gets a chance to move the line. It hopefully like what uh every now and Kevin again. Smith was saying that, you know, twenty years ago the Cohen brothers were making their movies mm-hmm. and they were very unique and they were very original and they were very quirky. Alright, and the studios were making these other movies that were nothing like yeah. them. And now twenty years later a we're studio movie movies, yeah is more like a Coen Brothers movie yep. with, like, this quirky, diverse yeah. cast and all these strange elements mm-hmm. than it is... What they were 20 years ...a ago. conventional studio Abs- movie 20 absolutely, years ago. Absolutely, but it's just... It's very frustrating because the so problem through is... through creativity yeah. and through sticking with a voice... And I and sticking think, with yourself, yeah. you move the whole line and I of think the next, And I think that the next evolution of that is going to be this range of diversity. I think, you know what I mean? I hope Black Panther does really well. I want it to succeed. I think Marvel, you know, that's the benefit. I think, I want Aquaman to succeed. I think that them casting, I think Zack Snyder's choice to cast an indigenous, an indigenous person as Aquaman was a really inspired and interesting and awesome choice. You know what I mean? Barring the fact that Jason Momoa is a gorgeous Hawaiian, half Hawaiian god man that is, anyway. Um, so like, he's really hot. <laughs> but no, but seriously though, casting an indigenous person as Aquaman was a really cool choice. Having, focusing on Cyborg. We gotta take a pause for a commercial break. <laughs> This is Danielle. This is Steven. And we're here to tell you about the Voondacast, official podcast of Voondablog.com, the home of whatever. We talk comics, movies, pop culture, dogs, Miami drivers, spies, everything and anything awesome that we love, we talk about on this podcast every Monday. Every Monday, only here on the Radioactive Underground. Radiate. Radiate. Like you said, we can push the creative button forward. And I think, and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna end this podcast with my thoughts. I think diversity is the wave of the creative future. I think that we want to see different directors. Even though, you know, I think Thor Ragnarok was a good movie, but I do think it could have had a little more of an emotional hit. I still think that the creative we direction. We like of... Thor Ragnarok a yes. lot. It was very good. Only Taika Waititi could have introduced the idea yes, that... of a rock man. No, and the idea that, you know, the Asgardians were colonialists yes. all along. And stuff. That was, no. Like, but there was a lot saying. of great elements. There were elements a lot of great elements. I do think that I, I was a little emotionally disconnected from the film in terms of character work, but that's a, that's a minor snippet. You know what I mean? I really like the movie, but I'm saying I would rather have all the things that he did with Thor that and then suffer a little bit less of the character than not have it, you know, mm-hmm. and cried my eyes out. I think what he, but I'm saying, like I said, I think the future of these movies and the creative needle is more diverse perspectives from female directors, directors of color, like different writers. And I hope to see more of that. And I think that's very important. So, but, and so my final point is, I don't think that Marvel and DC should be this odds. I think that it only benefits us as consumers if we foster multiple perspectives. Appreciation. First, first of all, 
there's not that many diverse perspectives. We only have, like, what, two studios, all right? Because nobody even gives a fuck about Fox, what they're fucking doing right now. And they're about to sell off their shit. Or Sony, really. Or Sony, really. No, they're about to sell off their shit because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. They're fucking Ghostbusters. They can't figure it out. So, really, it does not benefit us as consumers to only have one company doing everything. And if y'all keep shitting on fucking DC and Warner Brothers and not giving them a chance and not trying to, like, push them in the right way, they're going to sell off their shit, give it all to Disney, and it's going to be this creative dystopia where Disney owns everything. And they're getting there, guys. So, like, it benefits you to have creative diversity, whether that's behind the camera, in front of the camera, story-wise. It benefits you. Please tout for it. Don't have this stupid, childish this versus this there must be a winner and a loser that's actually only gonna make you lose Mm -hmm. it's the whole ninjas versus pirates argument why does one have to be a winner and a loser why can't we like ninjas and pirates they're only better when they're together ninja pirates what did did you say 2018 what did you say pirates yeah because i like pirates In in the strictest most fantastical sense in the real world sense they're horrible criminals yeah. So are ninjas. They're murderous assassins. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah. But my point being I, that... I always want cowboys. There you go. Because I don't want to be in this stupid argument. argument. The, the pro- exactly. The problem is this argument really at the end of the day is only hurting us as consumers. Because you're going to create a world in which you only have one thing and that's really not what you want. You think you want that, but you don't want that. You want perspective. You want different movies. You want to see other characters... I'd like to see some other characters besides, com- you know, all different kinds of comic book, whatever. And we're st- and still, at the end of the day, we're fighting about the same shit. We're fighting about people in tights flying in the air and punching each other. So really, the corporations have already won. But attempt to create a little bit more of a thorn in their side by asking them to do slightly different things. That's all I have to say. I really liked Wonder Woman the movie. I have been your host, Steven. <laughs> With me, the core fortress, Danielle. Check out the Avengers trailer, Infinity War trailer. Tell us how you felt about it on Twitter at Vundablog. Or at Vundacast. Or at Vundacast. Also Vundacast. on Instagram at Vundablog. At Vundablog. Or look at our cute dogs that are sleeping all around us at Duke. Xena Life. On Instagram. On Instagram. Um, or tell us how you felt about Justice League. On all of those things we just said. Vundablog, Vundacast, at Vundacast on Twitter, at Vundablog Instagram. A Facebook page, too. There's so all many the things. socials, all we the socials. We have medias. all the medias, all the socials. All the socials. We're so hip. With much the kids. social, much media. Remember, kids, when you're, you know, annoyed by, you know, fan criticism about, you know, trailers and you know, possibilities of movies being good or bad. Take a little time, kids. Go back in time. Look at that first Phantom Menace trailer and tell me that's not the best fucking trailer you ever saw (laughs) in your fucking life, bitches. Boom! Jar Jar's gonna be dope. He's destroyed us all.